Infusion Soft is used a lot as an emailing program, but it's also more than that. It's also a CRM and all sorts of things. When it comes to emailing people, they either have to be customers that you're emailing about products directly related to what they've bought. So for example, with our contracts, we email customers about updates which are coming out shortly. Or you have to have consent. It's very important in GDPR terms that you have a proper record of consent. And different email platforms work in different ways. So to make Infusionsoft not only display the right signups, but also keep proper records of how consent was derived and when and who's opted in and who's opted out is something that's quite new to a lot of people who've been using Infusionsoft for a long time. Because until last May, it wasn't that important to most people, particularly if you're not based in the UK, where we have for a long time had um, the PECR regulations that govern consent. But if you're non-UK based, then these regulations about consent or their equivalent apply to you if you are collecting data, personal data, about people based in the EU, even if you are not. So if you're in America, South Africa, Australia, wherever you are, these regulations still apply to you. The problem is for many of us that we didn't really tag on membership in the first place necessarily about what country or what jurisdiction they're in. So many of us had historic databases and this caused a massive clear up of data um, during last year, which is why we all got buried in an absolute tsunami of do you want to be on my list, do you want to still be on my list? I, for one, was getting emails from people saying, do you want to be on my list, when I don't know that I ever was and certainly don't remember ever signing up to it. But a lot of that was because the old information we had was incorrectly tagged and incorrectly signed up. So hopefully you're a long way away from that now and you are signing up people or trying to sign up people to your system in a GDPR compliant way. Now, there is an advantage to signing everyone up in the GDPR compliant way, whether or not they are EU or UK citizens. And the advantage to that is that at the moment and for the foreseeable future, GDPR is the gold standard of data privacy and consent. Whilst other countries may have rules, and not all of them do, those that do are generally far more lenient than the rules um, that the EU have adopted for GDPR. So you have a number of options. You can either have different rules for people to sign up from different countries by recognising their IP location, but that might be wrong. Uh, for example, I, I logged in somebody the other day, I got a USA price for it. And the reason why I got that was because uh, my VPN was stuck on America because I was trying to see something only available to Americans. So I would have been incorrectly addressed to an American sign up page if you're using that system. The advantage of using the GDPR standard everywhere is at worst you can be slightly over compliant, but you're not going to be non compliant with any standard in the world. Hi everyone, I am Amanda Slack, the Business Mechanic, and today I'm going to take you through creating GDPR compliant forms with Infusionsoft. So in this training, I'm going to show you how to create a simple GDPR compliant newsletter opt-in. Secondly, how to create a free opt-in with an optional newsletter checkbox. And then how to automate removing GDPR tags when someone unsubscribes from your list. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with Infusionsoft Campaign Builder and Web Forms. And one, whilst I am starting with the basics, I'll run through these parts quite quickly. I'm also assuming that you understand how tagging works and how to segment your list. And to just touch briefly on tagging and segmenting, I do still come across people who mail out to their entire list. Now, because Infusionsoft allows you to acquire contacts from all different means, for example, through selling e-commerce and so on, it's really important that you should only send your newsletter to the people that have expressly consented to receive it. So it's best practice to use a tag or a collection of tags to ensure you're only sending to those people. Okay, so let's jump into Infusionsoft. I'm going to start with the simple GDPR compliant newsletter opt-in. 
So when you log into your application, you will see you've got a navigation bar at the top. This is just a screenshot here, so you'll see a much larger screen, but I'm assuming that you're familiar. So if you hover over the navigation bar and go to marketing and campaign builder, you will be taken to your list of campaigns if you've got some, or to this screen. Click on the green button to create a new campaign. And then give your campaign a relevant name and add any relevant categories. OK, so once you've done that, you will see your blank canvas for, for your campaign and all the campaign elements showing down the left hand side. They do go further down, but I'm only showing you what we need for this training. So you need to find the web form icon under the goals section. I'm going to drag it across into the blank canvas. It's all drag and drop. OK, so you can see that I've renamed my web form and to do that, you just click in the title and you can just type re rename it just by typing in the title and then clicking out of the box again. I would always urge you to give every element of every campaign its unique name. Uh, it's so easy to identify in searches and reporting that way. I did have a client once who had 20 opt ins and they all were called newsletter opt-in. So it was really impossible to, when searching for how people were coming into her application, it was impossible to keep track of where they were coming from because every single form was called the same. So definitely rename it as you're creating your campaigns. Okay, so we'll double click into the web form to edit it. Then this is where you'll see four tabs along the top, design, thank you page, settings and code. And these all relate to customising the settings of the form. And I'll come to those in a moment. And then further down, we've got the format, insert, snippets and field snippets tabs. And they are all for designing and editing your form. So the first thing we're going to do is add an image quickly to our form just to customise it. So we'll go to the snippets tab and click on the image icon and drag it to the position in our form. Once you've dragged it, you'll get a placeholder and you can double click on the placeholder to browse and upload the image you want to insert. Once you've chosen your image, click insert update and the image will drop in. OK, so this one's collecting first name and email address only, which are both required, which is shown by the asterisk. If you want to add your last name in there as well, you just click into the first name field and that will give you the settings box for the name fields and you can select which names, title or middle name if you like, but first and last name is always sufficient and in, ensure that the required is on because obviously we do need to know their name and click save. So now you can see we're collecting first, last and email address. So if you want, you can style and change the text on the button and, and style the button itself just by clicking the button. Um, you'll see that there's a button label where you can change the text on it and the alignment. And generally, the advanced styling and the custom size is default off. But if you switch them on, it opens up a myriad of options for you to customise and make your button prettier. I'm not going to go into all of those details, but it's there for, for you to um, investigate. OK, so next we come to the GDPR specific parts of the form, and that's the checkbox for tagging people to your newsletter and link to your privacy policy. So we're going to add the required checkbox here to reinforce users' consent, because this is solely for adding people to the newsletter list. And so we want them not only to type their details and hit submit, but to check the box for further confirmation of their permission. So you need to click on the field snippets tab and find the checkbox icon and drag it to the position in your form. Once positioned, click the checkbox and this will open your checkbox settings to configure. The label here is what the text the end user will see on your form. So Enter something relevant here, for example, yes, please send me your newsletter or I consent to receiving your newsletter, making it completely clear what they are saying yes to. And then switch the required button to on. 
As I said, this reinforces their consent, but it absolutely must be their decision. So we must leave the pre-checked box as off. Okay, so now we've got a label and it's required. And there's a little icon here with the tag where you apply the tags. So if you click on that, this allows you to add tags when somebody submits the form with the checkbox ticked. Go into this on your Infusionsoft app, it will give you a drop down menu of all the existing tags. Um, or you can create new ones on the fly. So here I'm adding the GDPR lawful basis informed consent tag. So in later segmenting, I can see what basis I'm holding the contacts data and also the send newsletter tag. And these are the two tags that I would use to send my newsletter. So everybody with the send newsletter with the lawful basis informed consent tag, I'm going to use those together as a collection of tags to set to segment my newsletter list. OK, so once you've chosen your tags, hit done and then save. You can see that the two tags here are, have been allocated to this checkbox and click save again. And we've now got our checkbox on our form. So anyone submitting this form will automatically get those tags applied. So now we're going to add the text and the link to your privacy policy. And to do that, you would click the snippets tab and then grab the paragraph icon and drag it into position onto your form. Once it's positioned, you can delete the dummy text. It's sort of some Latin dummy text that's dropped in. Just delete the placeholder text and add in your own. You can see here that I've outlined that I won't add them to any other list or share their data, and they can unsubscribe at any time. And for more information, they can see our data privacy policy. You'll see that the data privacy policy is highlighted and that's because it's hyperlinked directly to the privacy policy hosted on my website. So to add that hyperlink, you would highlight the text and then go to the format tab and click the link button. And then that will give you the link options, choose link to web address and insert the URL complete with the HTTPS part of it, the web address field, and then click insert update. So that's our form done. Configuring the thank you page, and I'll run through these quite quickly. So click the thank you page tab at the top, and here you can either or choose to display a thank you page that's configured within Infusionsoft, or you can change the page to display to a URL and you can enter the URL here so that you redirect to the external page. OK, so moving on to settings tab, the spam bot detection is always default as on. This ensures that the Google recapture is enabled to avoid spammers as much as we possibly can, signing up a trillion times for one IP address. So I wouldn't recommend disabling this unless you are integrating your form via a third party app. For example, ClickFunnels is one that definitely does um, conflict and you have to switch that off. But other than that, I would leave that as unchecked. Duplicate check-in is really important. I always use the email address for dupe checking. You could use the name, first name and or last name and email address. But I tend to find that there's even more dupes drop into the application that way because somebody may spell their name differently or one day they put a middle name or a hyphen and then it just miscalculates the duplicates. So I would always go for the email address. And then you have the options to send yourself or your VA or someone else a notification when someone opts in. So you just enter the email address here that you want to send the notification to and add an email subject. This is quite useful if you're sort of testing an opt in. But as you get more and more people opting into one particular offer, it can drive you a bit nuts. So um, you can switch, you can go in and switch this off at any time as long as you've published the campaign after you've made the change. So moving on to the code tab, this is where you will find all the form code. And there's various instances where you might require JavaScript or styled and unstyled HTML code, for example, for embedding in your website. You can also choose to have the code sent to your webmaster literally by clicking this button or this uh, opening up this tab here and entering their email address and it will send them all three styles of code directly to their inbox. The main part you'll need on this page is to pick up the URL 
for the hosted version of the form. And this is, will, if you click on it, will give you two versions of the URL, a numbered version, which is a bit codey, and a pretty URL, which is a little bit more easy to identify later on if you're dropping it into social media and so on. Uh, you can also edit the pretty URL as long as it's unique. You can click edit and, and just edit this final section and then save it. And then you can either copy, sometimes this doesn't work, the copy, um, only if you've got Flash enabled on your browser, or right click on the link and save it for later. These links won't be live until you've at published your campaign. Okay, so once you've run through all of these tabs, you are ready to publish, so hit ready. And that will take you back to the canvas and you'll see that the previously gray newsletter web form has turned to pale green. This will tell you that it's ready to publish, but it hasn't been published just yet. And so we can hit the publish button at the top and you'll be taken to your campaign checklist. So this is a pre-publishing checklist. And if you see a red alert that something is fundamentally wrong and it won't let you publish the campaign, amber flags are just sort of alerts for you to check and these little arrows will take you through and show you what they mean. You can choose to ignore them, in which this case we will because there's no other element to actually connect to this campaign element. So of course there's nothing to connect, so it's not connected. So in this instance, everything's fine and you can hit the publish button down below. And then you'll be re redirected to the published campaign. Obviously there's no opt-ins here, so the number is zero. And as more contacts go in and add their details, the number will refresh. You've got a refresh button here and you can change the date filters so that you can double check. OK, so now we're looking at the reporting side and to go back to your campaign um, editor, you would just click edit. OK, so here's how your form, your published form will look to your users. So here we've got an open browser and our form here. So if I was to fill in all the details and click the checkbox, if I didn't check, click the checkbox and I hit submit, it would alert me to check the box. Um, if I check the box, I will be redirected to my thank you page. And then just to show you in the back end, if I was to open that particular contact who opted in, I'll search for the contact. And in the summary pane, you can click on the form submissions. And you can see here that I've submitted the form on the 18th of March. Now, if you were to double click in that um, icon in your application, you'll be able to see all the information, the exact information that was um, entered by that user. And just check in the tags here. So you can see that the tags have been applied, the date that they were applied. So that was the date that the opt-in forms completed. And I've got informed consent and I've got the send newsletter tag. So that will enable me to send this person the newsletter by my segment. Okay, so this next form is virtually identical apart from the additional text just here, where we are asking people not only to receive a free thing, but we are also asking them to sign up to the newsletter. But this is an optional um, extra. The text is very transparent about what they get when they check the box and it must remain optional. If you were to make the checkbox required, you would not be GDPR compliant because you cannot make the signing up to the newsletter a condition. So make sure that the text is transparent. So here we're saying, if you'd like to receive our weekly newsletter containing top tips and tricks, I'll tick the checkbox below, and we're stating what we're doing with our data, they can unsubscribe at any time. And of course, we've got our link to our privacy policy down below. They can choose, it's optional whether they click yes here, or they can choose just to receive the free thing. So the edits here that you need to make from the previous form is you would drag the paragraph snippet in just below the email field, edit that and add in your text, and then click on the checkbox to bring up your settings and switch the required field from on to off. Okay, so if they do check the, the box, then we've got still got the tags applying here, but if they don't check the, tick the box, the tags will not be applied. They will simply receive the delivery of the free thing. 
So that's your form done and once you've run through that you can publish it. But I'm just going to show you how the campaign looks on the back end. Slightly different from the previous one, whereas we just had a web form and that was allocating the tags. This one, we want to send a free thing as well. So we've got a sequence here. And then inside that sequence, we've got an email that delivers the free thing and a tag that we would have applied to say they've received the free thing. So those are the two forms. In summary, on the left, we have a newsletter list opt-in with a required checkbox. And on the right, we have a free thing opt-in with an option to be added to the newsletter list. Both of these forms, we covered how to tag people to add them to certain segments of your list. But what if somebody wants out? So, well, of course, if somebody unsubscribes, you cannot send them communications anyway. Infusionsoft will stop that happening. But if we leave the lawful basis newsletter tags present on their contact record, and then six months later, they sign up for something, some other thing that you're offering. So the contact record will become marketable again and the previous tags will become live, even though they didn't necessarily resubscribe to the newsletter list. So the safest thing to do is to set up a way of automating the removal of tags if somebody does unsubscribe. And this is how you do it. So inside of your application, go to the navigation bar and go to marketing and settings. And then on the left hand side, choose action sets. So you're coming to a list of your action sets that are in your application and you need to find the one that is usually number 201 when someone opts out of all marketing. An action set, just to explain, is a series of events triggered by one event. So what we want to achieve here is in the event that somebody opts out of all marketing, we then add actions to that action set to remove those particular tags. So to find that, if you, you may you may well have hundreds of action sets in your list. So I usually just type in opt out in the search bar and click search, and then you'll you'll see it come up in your list. We click edit to go into manage the action set, and we're going to add further actions that are triggered by this particular action. So on the drop down menu, just choose apply and remove tag. And when the, the box opens up with all the list of tags, these are all your existing tags. So you can go ahead and choose the tags that you want to remove. Um, remembering to click remove here, it will probably default to apply. So make sure that you change it to remove. And go ahead and select as many tags as you want to be removed at this point. Now you could just click on one tag if you want to select more than one. If you hold down your control key and each time you click, it will allow you to select multiple tags. Okay, once you've selected those, you click save and then you'll be taken to a summary. So here we can see that we were in this action when somebody opts out of marketing, it's set to remove these two tags. Once you're happy with that, click save and that's your action set done. So now every time somebody opts out of your marketing, those two tags will be removed. If they haven't got the tags present, they won't be removed, obviously. But if they have got the tags present and they opt out, then they'll be removed. OK, so that concludes the setting up of GDPR compliant forms in Infusionsoft. However, there are a couple more things you may wish to consider, depending on your business, just to make your business processes a bit easier. So firstly, if you run online courses and you use tagging in Infusionsoft to deliver those courses, access to uh, pages of your courses then you're going to want to allow people to unsubscribe from your marketing but continue to receive any course specific communications so in this case i recommend setting up a preference center allowing people to choose whether they continue to receive your newsletter or marketing or opt out of all marketing but without hitting the native unsubscribe button the link for this should also go into the footer of all your emails you are required by law to continue to show the native and subscribe link, but you can make it really clear in the text that you add to your footer to make sure that your students have the option to opt out of marketing while still receiving their course emails. So here's an example of the preference center. And then this is an example of the footer, the email footer that I have um, created. So we've just put an important, if you click unsubscribe, you won't 
receive any emails basically relating to your online courses, um, weekly newsletters and other promotional emails, then you can click here to update your preferences, which then links to your, your preference center. So they will continue to, use, to receive all the campaign emails relating to their courses, but they will have no marketing tags applied. This is the native unsubscribe link, which you can edit the text of just to make it a little bit more clear. So you are allowing people to choose whether they're on the list or not and giving them both options. They can unsubscribe if they want, but they won't, won't receive any details about invoicing or, uh, or any of that relating to any online courses, etc. So that's something that you might want to consider. Another consideration is the requirement to allow people to request, review, update, or erase their data from your application. And there are ways to automate that process um, by way of a web form or a, or a landing page. Here's an example of an Infusionsoft landing page, which basically gives people the option to give your their name and email address and tick what they want. Either do they want to view their personal data change their personal data or erase and there's a request box here and they can submit that and then there's a campaign behind the scenes that basically sends information to the team about who's requested data who's requested erasing and and so on for the team to review so that might be something that you want to consider in your own application and that concludes this training on creating gdpr compliant forms i hope it's been helpful to you thanks for watching